Now that Terraform is initialized and is able to communicate to AWS using my Cloudcast profile credentials, we can start doing stuff against our AWS account. So the first thing I want to do is actually create an EC2 server. So we have a few concepts to cover here. The first thing we're going to do is introduce what is called a data resource, a data type inside of Terraform. Data is a way to look up stuff inside of a provider to find things like IDs of uh, certain resources that you've created or that just exist outside of stuff that you've created, and generally just to get information about resources that you can use uh, later here. So what I want to do is actually create an EC2 server, but to create one, you need a base image to run. So for example, the base image of Ubuntu 20.04 or some custom server that you've made. So we do data. The data type I want is AWS AMI because the AMI is Amazon machine image. That is what they call their base images um, that you can use to create new EC2 server instances. It's going to be a data lookup. I'm going to try to find an AWS AMI, and I'm going to name this app, and the name here is arbitrary. You can name it anything. And we have some curly braces here, and then in here, we can define parameters to find and search for an AMI that we can use. So I want most recent equals true because I want the most recent AMI that's going to match the following items here. And the next thing we're going to do is owners, and owners can be an array of specific owners by AWS account ID or the word self to mean the current user uh, that's connecting to AWS. This ID is something you can hard code. It's the Canonical's official source of Ubuntu images. We're going to try to find an Ubuntu 20.04 image, uh, the most recent that Canonical has provided, because they build Ubuntu images for AWS and release them as public images that you can use. So here's the owner from Canonical. Now they make a bunch of images for various versions of Ubuntu. So we need to add some filters for this to use and search on to figure out what AMI we specifically want. So the first filter we're going to use is called name. So we have a name and values. So name and the value is Ubuntu images, HVM SSD. So we know it's going to be HVM type uh, with SSHD disk backed. It's going to be Ubuntu Focal 20.04 AMD 64 server and a wildcard. Now we know this is going to be HVM just because their naming convention already has it in it. But there are many filters you can add here. So for example, virtualization type HVM, that's a filter you can use for an AMI. And we know this is AMD 64, so it's AMD 64-bit architecture, but we can also specify the arch architecture as x86-64 versus something like an ARM instance, because they also provide ARM-based instances. So there's a lot of filters you can do here. Now to find out what filters uh, are here, it's not a matter of actually looking up the documentation in Terraform, but actually it's one of looking up the documentation of AWS so what filters you can make for the API call that Terraform makes under the hood. Let's head over to our browser and look up Terraform AWS AMI for the data source. And we can see there's a lot of things we can do here. There is documentation, of course, about all this. AWS AMI named example, most recent true name regex. You can do fancier things than I did here. And of course, filters. Um, so arguments like owners, most recent, is that executable users, and our filter that we've used multiple times. That's all documented here. We can do AWS CLI find AMI. So describe images is probably the API call that is being used under the hood. And I actually want the version 2 documentation. But we can see that the describe images API call made to AWS has very similar uh, things, right? So for the most part, Terraform will match very closely the API call parameters into AWS um, for their various resources that we can find or in the data sources. So uh, executable users, filters, image IDs, owners, all that good stuff. If we go down to filters, we can see we have a lot of filters we can choose from. And all of these are things that you can use inside of your data source in Terraform as a filter as well. Let's go ahead over here and just do Terraform plan to see if this is going to change anything. And we're going to find, actually, there's not. Um, we've defined a data source to find an AWS AMI, a machine image, on which to build a new server. But we haven't actually told it to build a new server. So we can go ahead and do that. So after our data source definition here, we can create a new one called a resource. And the resource keyword here is going to be just like data source. We're going to define it in a similar way in terms of uh, how it looks like in this HCL file and the cloudcast.tf file here. We're going to create a resource. So this is actually going to tell Terraform to create a thing in the AWS account, while the data source here was just to find something that already exists. So resource, AWS instance. Now AWS instance is the type of resource we're going to create. 
we have to name it something. In this case, I'm going to call it cloudcast underscore web. We're going to pretend it's the web ser application server for cloudcasts. And then we have certain parameters we can put in. Now, AWS instance can take in lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, parameters. There's lots of things you can configure when you spin up an EC2 server in AWS, but it doesn't have to be complicated here. And I'll paste in a few things here and we're going to see what we have here. We only have three essentially configurations here. The AMI. So this is the uh, machine image, the server image on which to create this EC2 instance that we're creating. And we can see we have some notation here. So data.awsami.app.id. So that is from this. We have data. The data is the AWS AMI type, the one that we've named app, and give me the ID that is returned when you find that image. Now, if you have a plugin, this can autofill for you. So data dot AWS AMI. See, I'm getting this auto filled for me. Dot app. App is the only one I have defined. And when I do dot here, it's going to know what parameters, what items here are available for me to use based on that AWS AMI uh, data source. So ID is here, and that's what I want. So this is going to be the AMI to create. I'm going to create an instance type t3.small and the root block device volume size eight. So eight gigabytes, which uh, is also the minimum number of gigabytes to create when you create a new EC2 instance. So now that we have this in this file, we can head back over here and see what Terraform wants to do. Okay, now we have one to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. We have one resource to add here, and we can see what it's going to do. The resource is AWS instance that's named Cloudcast Web, and it has all of this stuff. The AMI, it found, right? So it didn't have an error. It found that AMI. And all these other things are basically it's going to get set to defaults. T3 small for the instance type. EBS block device known after apply, which means this data isn't available yet, but it's going to know what it is uh, after it creates the server root block device known after reply because we haven't uh, done anything here except for its defaults of delete and termination. And we set the volume size to eight and we're ready to go ahead and create an instance if we want. Now I'm actually not going to go ahead and create this instance just yet. I'm going to head back to our editor here and I'm going to change our data source because if you followed along in the Packer course, you know that I created an instance, um, a base image there. So I'm going to use that instead of this default one. So to do that, I'm going to keep most recent. I'm going to change owners to self because I'm the owner. So the current AWS account that is connecting and talking to AWS here is going to be the one in which is going to find the AMI, right? So I have an AMI in my account. I'm going to go ahead and um, have Terraform find that. And I'm going to change the filters that are used here. So we'll delete these filters and I'll paste in some other ones. So filter, I want a state of available. And then we can filter by tags, right? So tag colon is telling AWS that I'm searching tags and component. I named it app. These are the tags I added and defined in the Packer configuration that created the AMI. And those AMIs have all of these filters. So tag component, tag project is Cloudcast. The environment, I'm going to hard code staging for now, although this is a good thing to set as a variable. We'll see that later. And the owner is self, like I said. Let's go ahead into my AWS account and take a look at that real quick. I'm going to go into AMIs. And we have a bunch that we created in the Packer course. And the newest is January 14th. And the tags, we can say component, app, environment, staging, managed by Packer, all this good stuff. This is going to find the AMI based on tags. So we can see that tagging can be really important for your use cases, right? So we can tag in AMI, in this case, properly with a lot of tags that describe what it's for, especially the environment tag, along with, of course, the component, right? What the use case is. Like this is the AMI for my application servers versus my worker servers versus some other uh, service inside of your infrastructure. And we can use tags to really get to what we want here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into terminal here. Let's clear this out. We're gonna do Terraform plan again, and we should see a different AMI show up. Okay, so no error, so it did find the AMI. And that AMI is a different one from before. This is um, one that should exist in my accounts here. So let's find it. And great, it found it. January 7th, 2021. I think the other ones were in 2020, right? So let's actually grab January 7th instead of January 14th. The issue is because they have Project Cloud CAS, Cloud CAS, but our newer ones have a tag of Cloud CAS. So of course I made a classic mistake here. What I want here is a Project of Cloud CAS. Then we can do Terraform Plan. Now we should get our latest AMI. Great, and we get our latest AMI, perfect. So I can go ahead and actually create an instance here. So we did the plan, so it's gonna tell us what it's gonna do. Now we can do Terraform Apply. And apply is going to recheck everything and make sure it still matches up, right? So one to add, zero to change, zero to destroy. And do you want to do this? I do. 
So now it's going to create that instance for us. Okay, and I have an error here. So cannot create volume besides 8 gigabytes from snapshot, blah, blah, blah. So the snapshot has a certain uh, device type and a certain volume size, and we need to have at least that volume size and probably match the same device type. So if I go ahead and go back here, grab my latest AMI, let's make sure it's the latest, yep. And I can go ahead and launch from this. I'll go to uh, next, add storage. Now this wants a GP3 type with 3000 IF, 125 megabytes per second throughput. So if I head back to my editor, this might be defaulting to a different uh, device type, for instance, GP2. So if I do volume here, there's volume type, and I can do GP3 here, and let's see if it likes that. You can see volume type is GP3. Okay, perfect. And now our instance is created. So we can go back to our AWS account, head to EC2. Instance running is two. I have one from before, and now we have a new one here. And our new one is created. Now it has no tags or anything. We basically did the bare minimum to create an instance. So tweet three small, it's still initializing, um, but it will be running our base image that we created using Packer from the Packer course. Now there's really not much to do with the server at all. We haven't done anything like add security groups to allow it access to um, web requests or SSH or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. In the next video, we're gonna start making changes to this instance to see when Terraform might just update the instance versus when it might destroy and recreate it, depending on the type of changes that we make. And we'll get into some extra functionality around Terraform as well.